King purposely got in the way, causing both ladies to fall onto the bed. Lola then helped Terry pin <laughs> Stacey down, which got the three. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 most outrageous WWE Diva matches, man. A lot of the Diva matches were pretty much piss break matches. People just went and did something else. Unless it was like the bra and panty matches that they used to infamously have. Uh, yeah, it, I, I, I will say this. The women's division has improved for the better and just in women's wrestling in general has improved so it's good to see that you know it's good to see that they have progressed from the women the the bra and panty matches yes they're cool to see but when you really think about it, it's like what what's going on here you know they deserve to have a little bit more respect so we're gonna check out some of these infamous bra and panty matches um I think they had matches in like mud and stuff uh, i think there was like pillow fights it was just it was just a whole bunch of stuff that jerry the king lawler lawler would love to commentate on so we're gonna check this out um uh, appreciate all the love and support you guys for showing on the channel let's get right into these legendary matches i know some of you guys are gonna love these matches <laughs> i already know when it comes to some of the strangest gimmick matches over the years a large portion of them have featured women wrestlers. Yep. They've wrestled in all different types of liquids and worn all different types of outfits. Yep. But usually, the lady wearing the least amount of clothes by the end was the loser. Penny! Penny's! For this list, we're taking a look at 10 of the most outrageous Divas matches. Oh boy. And we'll start with the evening gown pool match. The Attitude Era pushed the envelope so much that it made us all wonder how far the WWF yeah. could actually take things. <laughs> I know some of you guys going to love this gave video. Us an to this question. <laughs> but let's first set the stage. Oh. As the Women's Championship would be on the line with Ivory defending it in a four-way evening gown pool match. Elimination occurred <laughs> once a wrestler had their evening gown removed. I just want y'all to understand how silly that sounds. They're fighting for the women's championship in an evening gown pool. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm actually glad. For those who don't know, this was the thing. Before the women's revolution, this is what women's wrestling amounted to. Just putting that out there, bro. And the last woman standing would be declared the winner. The challengers on the night were Miss Kitty, wow, Jacqueline, Miss and Kitty. Didi. Mae Young and the fabulous Moolah acted as the special referees. The oh women began God. to throw each other in the pool before the match even got underway. And then once it did, the girls would team up and throw Ivory in as well. Jacqueline would be eliminated first, followed up by BB. However, despite being out of the match, Ivory still tried to remove more of BB's clothes. It was then Ivory herself that had her gown removed by Miss Kitty, meaning Kitty was the winner and the new women's champion. Kitty celebrated her victory by promising to get naked, although not fully naked. They made me wear underwear. What? She did this by flashing her breasts live on pay-per-view. Sergeant Slaughter would rush in to cover her up. Were they like, oops, or like, you think they oh, no, tricked you? I got a standing you? ovation when I went to the back. All the boys stood up, or everybody was cheering. <laughs> but there was still what? more to come, because Mae Young was also hell-bent on getting naked. But thankfully, the Sarge was there again to put this to a stop. Although this entire segment was quite the train wreck, JR and King on commentary were definitely the highlight. Number two, Gravy. Oh, brother. <laughs> I know you guys are going to love this video. I I know y'all are. I know there's some of y'all in the comment section. Take me back, please. I know. I know. Just just, just admit to yourself. Just put it out there. Gravy Bowl match. The Gravy Bowl match was a WWE Thanksgiving tradition, which luckily didn't last. One of the times it occurred took place on SmackDown in 2001, Why? when Trish Stratus put up the Women's Championship against Stacey Keebler. It looked like the two were about to treat themselves to a pre-match meal at first, 
but this only resulted in a food fight, a much more fitting WWE Thanksgiving tradition. After exchanging slaps, Trish nailed Stacey in the face with a pie and later threw her into the gravy bowl. They then brawled in the gravy where it was the champion that gained the upper hand, hitting a spine buster and locking in a camel clutch like submission hold. This was too much for Stacey who tapped out, allowing Trish to retain her title. After this the bell, a, a frustrated Keebler pushed referee Jimmy Kamara oh! into the gravy bowl as this fiasco came to a close. Jerry Lawler was once again on fire at the events <laughs> table. This was also only King's second show back after returning to the WWF. And you can really tell how much he missed commentating on stuff like this. <laughs> Number three, <laughs> mud match. Our oh, last example yep. wasn't the only bizarre stipulation Trish and Stacy wrestled each other in as they battled in quite a few crazy match types. Once again, y'all, this is a different time. I know, I know some of you younger fellas like, please, I wish this happened now, but no, we need to progress and move forward. No. Including a bra and panties oh my match God, on Raw bro. in 2002. Stacy got the jump on Trish to start with an attack from behind. Keebler then threw Stratus off the ramp into the mud below. Oh Once my. both ladies were in the mud, Stacy <laughs> also pulled referee Charles Robinson in. After a muddy back and forth, Trish rolled up Stacy on the outside to get the three. Howard Finkel then attempted. to console Stacy, which allowed Trish to push both of them into the mud. <laughs> furious Stacy proceeded to then slap and beat on the Fink to bring things to a close. It only got worse for Howard the next week when he lost oh. the tuxedo match to Lillian Garcia. You have to hand it to the Fink though, as yeah. well as being a legendary ring announcer, he was also a fun entertainer. Yeah, Number rest four, in peace. Uh, Lita vs. Trish man. Stratus. We'll now look at a more traditional Braun oh, Panties match. Boy. These matches became a common theme in the early 2000s, with countless yep. occurring during the days of the TV 14 race. I I remember seeing the bra and panty matches a lot, bro. Like those, I remember that vividly in my memory of just the, someone would say, "Oh, you remember that, huh?" Look, man, this was this was on TV, man. Rating. But we're gonna go back to the very first one the WWE ever did: Lita vs. Trish Stratus from Raw in the fall of 2000. Lita was also defending her women's championship here. She started off strongly with a nice flying clothesline, but it was Trish that removed oh, the first bro. item of clothing <laughs> by pulling off Lita's top. After this, the King cracked a joke that produced a rare laugh from Jr. The last time you saw a press was in a Kentucky Fried Chicken box. From there, Lita performed a <laughs> oh head scissors takedown that no. spiked Trish into the mat. Lita then removed the top of Stratus to even the score. The two ladies then traded suplexes before Lita climbed to the top to hit her signature moonsault. She then took off Trish's pants to retain the title. This was actually quite a technical affair for a bra and panties match, which for that reason probably makes it the best one. Following the match, <laughs> the king briefly got some camera time. Let me wrap my jacket around you. The right to censor then appeared yep. to introduce their new member, Ivory. She proceeded to berate the girls in the ring and the WWF for continuing to showcase scantily clad women. Number five, wet and wild water contest. We've looked at wrestlers throwing each other into mud, gravy, and water already. But now we have a match where water is used as a weapon in a wet and wild water contest wet where the only wild. way to win is by pinfall or submission. Candice Michelle wrestled Tori Wilson and both girls immediately got to work by shooting one another with water guns and launching water this balloons back and forth. Was Candice real would take over by throwing Tori thing, onto the bro. balloons. But then after a splash from the second rope only this... got two, Candice threw a bucket of water at the referee. Tori then poured a bucket of water over Candice and gave her a stink face, which a fan in the front row made sure to capture on his flip phone. <laughs> Wilson covered Candice in water one last time before hitting an x-factor for the win afterward tori threw some of the remaining water balloons at the announcers <laughs> number six evening gown match next we have another evening gown this match that was contested this time in the ring it would be wrestled under handicap tag rules and would see may young and the fabulous moolah team up to take on ivory ivory had to remove both of her opponent's gowns to win so she wasted little this time and began wild, the attack by bro. using this her shoe a as a weapon on moolah <laughs> may then sprung into action with a takedown however ivory responded with two snapmares that saw may land on her head twice jerry lauder then chimed in with one of his trademark jokes i don't know if 70 is the real age I saw him get checked by the doctors in the back and Moolah's birth certificate was in hieroglyphics. After all, the May went for a cover, which the ref attempted to count. It was now time for Ivory to regain control. Oh she eliminated my. May by removing her gown. <laughs> 
and then sent Young over the top rope to the floor. The fresh Muller entered next and managed to gain the advantage, removing Ivory's evening gown to get the win. Overall, this one gave us a few laughs, but the WWF didn't paint their women's champion in the best light since she failed to defeat two long since retired wrestlers. Yep. Number seven, lingerie pillow fight. We've oh seen the King give us boy. some zingers on commentary so far, but for this next match, he would be the referee when <laughs> Stacey Keebler fought Terry Runnels in a lingerie pillow fight. Lawler also had a live microphone in his hand, so he made sure to get his jokes and innuendos in. <laughs> Hitting a body slam, Stacey loaded up a pillow with a clock, but her attempt to use it was countered into a drop kick oh, from Terry. Ronalds followed this up with a Bronco Buster. Stacey came back by hoisting Terry up in a powerbomb position. However, King purposely got in the way, causing both ladies to fall onto the bed. Lola then helped Terry pin <laughs> Stacey down, which got the three. Oh, this is great, bro. This is fucking Jerry just hitting the... <laughs> oh, I got you. I got y'all. <laughs> he count and gave Terry Runnels the victory. Stacy, with every right to be upset, grabbed the pillow that she stuffed the clock inside and hit Terry in the back of the head with it. Keebler then grabbed a bucket of tar from under the ring and what poured it all fuck? over Terry. The king has lost control. None of his bodily functions and everything else. Number 8, Tori vs Miss Kitty. The next entry on the list takes us back to the pool, which for this match was filled with chocolate pudding, as Tori challenged for the Women's Championship vs Miss Kitty. Bro. After making her entrance, Kitty informed Lillian Garcia that she now wished to be known as the cat. The match began and the cat immediately tackled Tori into the pudding, as they then both rolled around it. Tori was able to use her size advantage to overpower the cat. However, Tori's rival at the time, X-Pac, would show up equipped with a wetsuit and snorkel. Tori attacked X-Pac and they both fell into the pudding. The cat was then able to pin Tori and win the match. Afterward, X Pac was thrown into the pudding by Tori's boyfriend, Kane, with the big red machine nearly even falling in himself. It was quite funny to see him in such a setting, since he felt completely out of this place being involved in the match. Like this. The New Age Outlaws then ran in to put the boots to Kane. <laughs> Finally, once everyone else had left, Lillian Garcia incorrectly announced Miss Kitty and not the cat as the winner, and you can guess what happened yeah. next. I am the cat. <laughs> Number nine, the cat versus Hervina. The cat definitely defended the women's title in some of the craziest types of matches. Yeah. This next one might take the cake because of how absurd the entire situation is. The stipulation would be a Lumberjill snow bunny match. And the cat's opponent was Havina. The cat quickly attacked Havina as the Lumberjills threw snowballs. The cat then got into a scuffle with Jacqueline, who ended up nailing the cat and knocking her down to the snow. Havina raced into the cover and actually got the win. In the post-match, Havina was interviewed by Michael Cole, and we soon found out the new champion's real identity. Y you're Harvey Whippleman! That's right! Harvey then shoved Cole down before all the Lumberjills ran in to attack Whippleman. This will go down as the worst title changes in WWE history, as this was perhaps the moment when the women's division reached rock bottom. As this would be the second of three times within the space of two months that a non-wrestler held the women's championship. That's Number cold, 10, bro. Braun Panty's gauntlet match. Last and perhaps least, we have the first and only ever bra and panties gauntlet match, which went down at New Year's Revolution 2006. Damn, Candice, Michelle, and Maria bro. started things off. They each removed an item of clothing from one another. Wow. Then Candice would go for a rope-assisted head scissors. Maria managed to turn it around, though, by pulling off Candice's pants to eliminate her. Tori Wilson was the next girl to enter. Maria oh, managed to remove Tori's top, <laughs> and then it was time for the referee to get in on the action. Apart, yeah. <laughs> Wilson then attempted to attack the ref for getting involved, but this gave Maria the chance to strip Tori down to her bra and panties, resulting in the elimination. Next up was Victoria, who made quick work of Maria. Victoria then stood in the ring awaiting the next competitor, but it was Mae Young and the oh fabulous Moolah who came down instead. <laughs> and even though they weren't officially in the match, they still looked to oh seal the show, with Mae Young God. first removing her top and then her dress. 
Victoria then attacked May. However, Mula stepped in as she and May began to double team Victoria, eventually managing to remove her top after a very long time trying. Ashley was the final girl to enter. Victoria attempted a widow's peak, but Ashley was able to counter by rolling through and then removing Victoria's wow. pants to claim the victory. Following the match, Ashley celebrated by stripping down to her bra and panties. <laughs> We've certainly come a long way since the days of wet and wild, bra and panties, snow bunny lumberjill, gravy bowl, lingerie pillow, evening gown mud matches. And while none of these matches have aged at all well, it's still fun to look back and ask, what were WWE thinking? And that brings us to the end of this video. Wow, As always, man. if you enjoyed the video, this, this was a uh, this was a great one. I, I know some of you fellas out there are gonna love this video. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to toss up the question to you guys. What's your favorite <laughs> type of match from this era, from the Divas era of WWE women's wrestling? What was your favorite type of match? Let's, we, we're here. We're, you know, let's indulge. What was your favorite type of match? Was it the bra and panty matches? Was it the, the water fight matches? Was it the, the, uh, the chocolate pudding matches? Let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support road to 100k appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next week <laughs>